for bedroom. This would be a toes room right here. And so. Right, nobody, nobody gets in there. Oh, you got the bus? Michael? Go! Going live. Going live, man. Hey, we are live. Hey, this is Michael Palmer. And I'm Brenda Bentley. And we are with Joe Cephas in the George Jonestown motherfucking massacre. How, go, how you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Okay, well, of course we know you, Joey. Could you uh, introduce yourself? This is Brian Costner and Nate Wade. And could you tell us the instruments? You're obviously bass because I saw you play a bass. Right. Uh, um, then again, I saw you play. And so tell tell us guys, uh we got a new single out. The high road. The high road. <laughs> tell us about that. Tell us. Oh, it's just about how you can just be minding your own business and just get sucked into online drama. You just really in. What's the famous line? Can you give us the course? It's, Kind of take it's, high, it's hard to take the high road when you're dealing with a total cut. <laughs> oh, man. That's your, that's your religious song. Isn't that it? is. I got, <laughs> got Beyonce singing on it. Got him playing lead guitar on it. Our other drummer, uh, Daryl Stevens, plays on it. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, we just now put that out straight to iTunes. And I got it. You sent it straight to me. And I love yep. it. And, awesome. And also, y'all got another a, a Black Oak Arkansas tribute album. In August, it's called uh, Mutes of the Monster, uh, Tribute to Black Oak, Arkansas. We got everybody from uh, Sheer Janets, Jimbo Mathis, uh, Jello Biafra, uh, uh, members of the Butthole Surfers, the Merciful Fate. And, and uh, does it, uh, Jello play on uh, the Jello song? sings on the, uh, what is it, uh, Jim Day to the Rescue. What was the like working with him? We, we talked e about this earlier. For the most part, it was all email. We just Email tracks to everybody. Uh, Jimbo Mathis came in the studio. Uh, uh, Richard Lee Reynolds from Black Oak came in the studio. Who else came over? Nashville Pussy was in the studio. Oh, just there right interviewed him a few months ago. Yeah. I mean, you've got Blaine Ryder like, came over. Ryder, right Blaine, or, and, and, and Bonnie. The Bonnie is backup back. up on uh, Jim and Richard. She's a great, she is a great backup singer yeah. as well. I mean, hell of a bass player. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, Brenda's got a couple of questions. Go ahead, Brenda. Yeah, so your single, The High Road, is it from your tribute album or is that from a new album? And what can we expect from we that? We got a new album that's more heavy, kind of, stoner rock, kind of, but it got kind of a little sucked into some online Facebook. I mean, I don't get into that, so I was like, I'll just write a song. So <laughs> we just kind of went back in the studio, recorded that like two weeks ago. Yeah, it was just, it was oh, this EDs already done. This is just sort of out of the blue, precursor. Yeah, part of the just put it out, and it's like we had the other city ready to go, and we were getting ready to put out the Black Oak tribute record. Uh, no labels were biting, and the last week when we were about to give up, a label called Softback out of Texas came through and said they were going to release it on double buy. Wow. So it's like, well, we got this CD done, we'll hold off, wait, because they're going to put some uh, piece of press going. I we're giving all the profits from sales to a local Memphis animal charity called the Sabre Foundation. Cheers! That is fucking awesome. Way to go, guys. So help out the dogs and, and the uh, cats. Don't leave the, the cat. cats. Leave the cats out. Don't leave but the cats. We got, uh, we got Ricky Lee Reynolds and Greg in from Black Flag. Sounds like a Black Flag Arkansas going on. Jesus Christ. Doing electricity came to Arkansas. I mean, okay. Let, well, well, you had a question about Go ahead about MySpace. Yeah. Um, so I actually first heard of you guys on MySpace. I was like, wow, really? 10 years old. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know it sounds like, you know, a lot of musicians, you know, further their careers or whatever. Uh, what did it do for you guys? I just would network, network, network. Just but start just going on the road, like playing shows with a lot of people out of town. That was a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Booking shows with uh, those bands and vice versa coming to Memphis. A lot of bands will tour nonstop and just play, 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 play. And we would kind of find bands playing within an eight hour radius, like a David Allen Co. or a Hort Eight or something, and go get on that field so you can hit a bigger crowd without just going night after night to 12 people, 12 people, 12 people. I got to interrupt real quick. What was it like playing the stage, the stage, just chip up, being a bass player? Uh, recorded with him? Oh, you recorded with him? Yeah. They came to the studio. Yeah. Get out. Yeah. Get out the front door. <laughs> yeah, it was my, it was my geek out moment. He was. <laughs> I don't know all the artists that we played with on this CD, but uh, when he told me we were playing with Jimbo, I was like, oh, that's a good one. I saw a squirrel on zippers growing up. Oh wow, yeah. Blown away by that. It was a lot of fun. 
fun, you know, jazz party and whatnot. Uh, but yeah. what, what he did the song was great. We had this whole thing worked up. We rehearsed it, we had it down, we're, this is what we're going to record. And, and he comes in and he goes, yeah, that's good, but uh, hey, what I found that one part you cut the half time, y'all just follow me. And we did it twice in the track. It was, it was, that'd be great. It, it changed yeah. the whole mood of the song. It's, it was great. Every song kind of leads to the style of whoever gets done. Yeah, so, I mean, what do you? I mean, what do you feel like? Being, I mean, you're you're all from Memphis, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the the town of Kings, you know, and you have all these people playing with you. How long have you been together, friends? Eleven years. Me and him, he's on the first record, and we've had a revolving cast for a long time. He's been around since what, 2006, seven, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Yeah, MySpace. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and like when MySpace, we would travel, and he had the wireless car. So when we're driving, he would he would get on MySpace, MySpace and invite everybody the, the whole time. Uh, yeah. So about so I mean, I mean, does it does it overwhelm you that like you're working with these people that you yes. really are le legends? Yeah. I mean, did you just go, fuck, I can't believe it. don't like, make sense. Cause our first show ever was opening for Shooter Jennings. And then, okay. like, the second or third, we got with Horton Heat. And then we played, actually, Knoxville with Cole. So I was like, well, this is kind of. And then, with the original idea was to get Jim Dandy to do a seven inch record with us. And we had, uh, we recorded Fever in My Mind and Hot Rod. And he's like, well, everybody's coming with Hot Rod, so let's do Fever. And Shooter Jennings started kind of helping promote us, so I asked him if he'd do a song. Like, we got Hot Rod, if you don't want to do it, you can't do it, or don't. If something happens, you can't do it, no problem. I'm like, sure, I'll do it. Like, well, hell. And then really wanted to get, like, we got this, and really wanted to work with Greg Gannon for Black Flag. Uh, I can't believe you got Greg! Well, he's playing into the animal thing, so it's like, charity album, get the money charity. And he came on board, and as we kept getting more people, it was easier to get more people. Uh. And, and, and I mean, obviously, uh, I, I've got a show, shooter as well. That motherfucker knows everything about you. You could ask him any musical question. Of course, when you're oh, dead, yeah, yeah, legit. Yeah. But I mean, if you just sit down and talk to him, you're like, he's in so shit. much music. It's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, we we were actually doing an interview, and he had a lot of that Iron Maiden thing, a patch on his back. We sit there and talk like ten minutes about how awesome the album was. Oh yeah. And I said, I think we really ought to switch gears because that's right when Ben the Ozak and Outlaw came out. And they were, I was like, yeah, we might want to talk about your stuff now. But uh, <laughs> so I mean, you 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 played with Co. You, who are some of the other legendary country artists you play with? Play with? Oh jeez. Well, on the bass, the album we got Willie Nelson's oh, harmonica player, Mickey Raphael. Who is still the new guy? Yeah, he's been he, there for forty years. As far as shows, and, uh, well, we play with percussion. Oh no, unknown Henson, Morton Heath, but then we've also played with HR Bad Brains and Agent Orange. Tell us the story about uh, uh, driving to CHR. That was a great story. Drove, you know, fiance drove eight hours to see <laughs> that train wreck. I love Bad Brains. We he love Bad Brains. Took off work, went to go see him, and he kept messing with his towel on his head. <laughs> well, actually, before the show started, uh, me and my fiance comes back. She goes, I hear people talking about it, they're trying to stop us from peeing in the dressing room. So we're like, there's your sign. And then he comes on stage and kept mincing with this, this towel he had on his head, and he kept just mouthing the words of the song and not singing. And so I went to the sound guy, I was like, dude, what's up with vocals? And the dude just kicked up with the beer. He goes, you're, you're, you and everybody else keeps asking me that. And he goes, he's, he's so fucked up, he thinks he's singing. <laughs> so he didn't sing a word the whole time, so after 45 minutes, he just left. <laughs> You know, the crowd participation thing is cool for three or four songs. Well, where did they play? Uh, That's great. That's great. Oh. And I seen him before in 99, and he held a, a VHS camera when they were kind of yeah. there. He held it on him the whole time. <laughs> Not to look in the crowd. He just held it at him like he wasn't even there and just did the show. Yeah, he's a... He's a well, we played with him doing his reggae thing before. And then yeah. he, was more on, he was more on track. But he was not a crack. He was on. He was on weed. weed. Yeah. He was just smoking a little oh, weed, man. Oh, which is crack getting involved. But I think I'm clearly. Well, obviously, you, time. you do not know HR for bad breaks. You got some stuff going on. You don't know what's going to happen when HR comes on. Yeah. So, uh, so tell it. Tell us about this. How how, how we're we're getting ready to release all this stuff. What can we expect from uh, from you guys? Uh, the the next... monster should be out in August. I think they're going to be pre-orders for a double vinyl. Like I said, we're giving all our profits from sales to the local animal charity, Taylor Foundation. Uh, it's coming out in uh, double vinyl, CD. I think it'll be a burnt orange limited vinyl. Then we got the follow-up CD, which we haven't named yet. That's going to come out a couple months later. And that's what Hyro is featured on. 
Power Row, no, Power Row is just coming out of last year. Oh, it's just it's out of That is strictly for the... But we're also fixing to do a country EP now after all this comes out. We're going to start working on it. Okay. Okay. We'll do a couple of country covers and a couple of new songs. We bring in songs. Okay. There we go. And I got I got to talk about, I can't let you go, Joey, without talking about your lyrics. Uh, th those are very Bible influence, aren't they? No. These are the Quinton. I played Quinton. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I played Quinton for my dad, and he was like, "How did they get away with saying that on the record?" He's seventy-four years old. He goes, "I like the music, I like to sing it, but how the fuck did they get away with saying that on the record?" Because you know he's from that. Right. So I mean, what inspires you? To write? I mean, you I had a bad review at it. work, and I just wrote it on the bus. And so the local radio station played it every day for seven weeks in a row. And people from where I was working at the time before I quit the job were all calling in. And then finally he was like, hey man, I heard the song you wrote about me, but it is funny. And I can't really bitch about it. It's kind of mean, but it is funny. And then he goes, I know it's kind of blowing up right now, and it's about me, and that's, that part sucks, but it is a good song. Well, that, that's awesome. That's so good. Did you have more? You were the only yeah, person. I did, yeah, I meant to ask, um, you mentioned that you just kind of tagged along on one of the Whatever manager in the local area. Um, what is your favorite genre to open for? Like, what fans of certain genres do you think react to the best? Cole has the most mixed crowd. From yeah. like the long hairs, the cowboy has, and you can do a heavy song, country song. They're with it. That 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 that's probably we go over great. Yeah, we're playing a few reggae, uh, a few reggae bands, and it, it's an unusual mix up, but everybody seems to dig everything. Yeah. Oh, it's because they're fucking hot, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love this. Man. Not that you're not good. You know? I mean, I'm not saying that. Are they, well, uh, anybody that likes the fast, heavy country stuff likes to slow down and enjoy the reggae tunes. Yeah. Too. Just, uh, what do you think about the title uh, about being uh, Merle Haggard meets Motorhead? I thought, whoever coined that, I, and I wish I had. I wish I had. It was a way to just help get gigs, so that way it would get interest to check it out. I would cover them both, though. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like I said, I'm a huge fan, and I, but when I heard that, I was like, who coined that? And I was wondering, because I used to be music journalist, I was like, whoever did that, that was fucking I cool. heard to always get a tagline to get their attention whenever I send it out, because I did all my own booking, uh -huh. and so I just send that out and get attention. And then people, some people will say, we've seen the name, and we'll see if you can back it up. Ex that's exactly why I liked you on MySpace, and what? 11, 12 years ago? Yeah, Well, yeah, I mean, that's when we discovered you. Yeah, so, I mean, and, you know, finally tonight we're going to see you guys live. Yeah, and we are live on Facebook. I keep forgetting that this shit's going <laughs> on. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. If you haven't got your ticket, bring your ass down to the fucking internet. It's a great show. It's going to be the most badass show you've seen all year. Even though fucking Courtney National Pussy and fucking no chance of playing the show. And with the Red Elvises. Have you ever heard of those guys? Yes. They're fucking incredible. We played with all three of the other bands before, and that's always fun. Oh my god. I we played Knoxville before with Hanson. Was it John? Was it here? It was, no, it was no, uh, in some place. And you could really tell the 12 people there will see us. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bunch of, yeah, there was a bunch of punk kids out front, like, enjoying what we're doing, and, and like, the rest of the bar is just kind of looking at us like, <laughs> yeah, pretty good sure show. Good show. Great show. You guys on my space. Awesome, man. So. <laughs> good show. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for uh, sitting in with that already. Hey, we appreciate it. Uh, before you, uh, before you uh, do Quentin Tom, I think that you ought uh, to give a shout out to Al already. I will. And Paula. I will. Would you do that? I will. That would be so fucking awesome. And I'll buy a t shirt. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Take it easy. Appreciate I'm it. Here. Cheers. Hey, thank you guys. <laughs> thank this you. This is Out Over the Gate Nation. I'm Michael Palmer. I'm Brenna. Joey. Brian. Dave. And we will see you at the show, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. Sweet people. All right. Thank you guys. You can we get some bitches outside? Yeah, guys, really bounce. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Oh, I yeah, appreciate great. it. Now we appreciate you. Like I said, the MySpace thing. Wow, that's gonna wow. Wow. That is exactly where I was in there for hours. Right now, we just so much of the computer we get hot, right? Yeah. Did you get the AOL disk still left in? Yeah, the wireless card it just hang on, hang on, like, Oh God, it's ridiculous. Uh, I can't even imagine uh, how that was ten years ago. I'm trying to get pictures. Okay.
You gotta turn the camera the other way. You know how to use your camera. No, man. <laughs> I'll bring out OJD. Oh, no. You want me to take a picture of all of you? Oh, yeah, that'd be easier.